Welcome back to the Let's Play world. We have done some building, we have done some exploring, and today it's time that we set up some farms so that we can continue to survive in this amazing survival world. I have a bunch of farms that I think will be most important to us to be able to survive in this world, and we are gonna try and build all of them. Starting with borrowing a couple of villagers from this village to bring back to our valley. Luckily, I trapped some of these villagers into their houses when I was here last time. So hopefully, yep, there's one. Plus, we have a whole bunch of rails from the abandoned mineshaft under my bay. So hopefully, we should have enough to get us all the way back over to the valley behind those mountains. I'm going to steal some of your beds as well, because we're going to need beds for our villager breeder, which is... That's where you're going, just, just so you know. Well, that railing did not go as far as I had hoped it would go. Um, it's just got us to here. So I think we're going to dig straight through the mountain and try and take the villagers that way. But for now, let's build them a temporary box to hide in. Can't believe it's episode six and we're building a dirt hut. There we go. Okay. The first villager is heading down the track. It's all downhill to start with, so hopefully... There you go! You gonna make it? And into the dirt hut. Perfect! I've set up a trap for a villager with the bell and a job block, and I'm, I'm hoping one of them comes over here, because I really don't want to have to build the rail over there. Wait, did you... That is so sneaky. Excuse me. He went around the entire house to get to this. Oh, it's because they can't go across rails, isn't it? There we go. Okay, we got our second villager. Let's send you on your way as well. Go and join your friend in that little dirt hut over there. And I'm just going to dig straight through the side of this mountain. I think we're going to have to go at a bit of an angle, which is going to be really awkward for the rails, but... We're gonna just dig straight through and hopefully we'll end up back in the valley. Let's light this up a bit. Oh, this is gonna not be fun to run down. Ugh, I feel like a pimble. I feel like my eyes are going a bit funny from doing this. <laughs> I can't see straight anymore. Now we can just dismantle this beautiful dirt house that I built for the villagers and hopefully send them on their way. Are you gonna make it up the hill? Ooh, good question. I'm not sure if you are. Nope. Don't come all the way back. Please don't come all the way back. This wandering trader is just getting in the way of everything. You're going to make me push you up this hill. That's what's going to happen, isn't it? You're going to have to push you up the hill one by one. Oh no, no. Okay, we've made it out to the other side and I've just realised that the ground in this valley is covered in pink petals, obviously, because... It's a cherry blossom biome. Of course there's pink petals everywhere. But it makes placing rails really, really difficult. So I need to come up with a better way to move these villagers. Let's block off this tunnel because we don't actually want a tunnel entrance into the back of our valley. No, thank you. And I think instead I'm going to go and grab a couple of job blocks and see if I can just lure them over to where we're going to build a villager breeder. We're going to just leave these guys here for a second. We'll be, be right back. Now we just have to hope that these villagers feel like behaving for us today. You can't get back to your village that way. Where are you going? Uh. <laughs> you tried to escape and the water is taking you. Let's just take this one first. We can do one at a time. We'll come back for that weirdo. I've lost my villager. Where have you gone? You were stuck in this water. In here. Oh. <laughs> um. Hi. Hello. There's just a cave full of goats and a village. Oh, have you all got pushed down here by the water? Oh my gosh. You poor things. Let me see if I can free you. There we go. There we go. Okay, I've managed to get them both. No, hold on. How can you... Ah, they can climb on the bell? What? Okay, you shouldn't be able to get out now. I think you are both fully trapped in here. Yeah? Yeah? Good. Here, have a bell. You can have your composts. 
you got your beds. We're going to build a villager breeder right about here, I think. That's why I've kind of put them here. We'll just build it around them. And then they'll be nice and set in where they're supposed to be. And of course, we're going to have to decorate it. So we need to get some resources for building. I'm going to keep this in the same kind of style as our starter house over there. This is sort of the style and color palette that we're going to use throughout the whole valley. But we'll make it a slightly different shape, slightly different details to it, just so that it doesn't get too repetitive. So we're starting with the stone brick base and putting in some mossy and cracked stone brick as well for some variation and i'm gonna have a little extra bit of the building kind of sticking out the front to add a bit more shape to it because it's currently just one big square actually i think i want this to be a bit narrower it's a bit too wide at the front then we can add the wood layer and i'm thinking we make this back section quite tall like double the height now we just get to fill in the walls with the mushroom block and, well, the combination of a mushroom block and the birch. And then we need to strip the birch and we also need to place mushroom blocks against the mushroom blocks and then get rid of them so that we end up with this inside texture, which is so much nicer and perfectly matches in with the birch. And we've done the same over on the starter house and I think it looks really good. So. It's a bit tedious. It takes a little while to um, place mushroom blocks next to everything and then mine them away. But we're going to do this again for this one because I think it looks really good when it's actually all done. Well, this looks horrendous. That is much better. Although it's a bit flat, we definitely need some windows and some details and decorations. And a roof, of course. I'm gonna use the dark oak for the trim because I like how it contrasts against the lighter color of the walls. And it also contrasts with the lighter pink for the roof that we're gonna use. Okay, I've been trying to figure out how I want to fill this kind of big empty flat wall with something just to add some detail. I've added a window. I've redone this about three times. I think I'm happy with this now. So I just need to repeat this on the other side and also probably similar thing on this side, but it's a bit taller. So maybe we'll just have a slightly taller window in the middle. So I think the outside is looking nice now. We've got some light, we've got some decorations. We've kind of broken up all of the big spaces on any of the walls, but the inside um, definitely needs some attention. I need to fix those as well, but I do need to use some glass for the villager breeder so that we can have the tunnel, the tube coming down. And as you can see by the window, I have actually run out of glass entirely and I haven't got any sand or anything to make any glass. So I think now is maybe a good time to take a little break from building. These villagers are nice and safe in their house. And I think we should go out and collect up the things that we are missing for the rest of the farms that we're gonna be building. And I also need some slime balls to make sticky pistons. We're gonna go on a little bit of an ocean adventure, go and grab all of the sand that we need and see if we can find ourselves a swamp of some kind, a mangrove swamp, a regular swamp. I think three stacks of sand is probably plenty for now. We can always come back and get more if we need it. I'm just gonna kind of follow this shoreline along. Instead of sailing out into the water, we're gonna just sort of follow around the edge of the land. That seems to be quite a good way of finding different biomes, not just getting lost at sea in the middle of a, a huge ocean. Ooh, there's a shipwreck here. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, and a treasure map. Let's go see if we can find buried treasure. I'm definitely getting sidetracked and distracted here. This looks like it's fairly nearby, actually. So let's go see if we can find it. Here, right? Yes. No diamonds, which is a shame. Okay, back to our swamp search. Oh, that's, that's a mangrove swamp. 
We found a mangrove swamp. That's perfect because we can also get some mud while we're here so that we don't have to keep making it in our little mud hole. I didn't check what kind of moon it was actually so we might be here for a while depending on what the moon is because slimes like to spawn more on a full moon than not on a than a not full moon so it if we don't have a full moon we might have to wait for one we are we are not very close to a full moon at all in fact Four stacks of mud and a few proper gules, just in case we want to use any mangrove wood in the future. I can bring those back with us. I'm gonna just swim around the edge of the mangrove swamp while we wait for nighttime to fall again. Just see what else we can find while we're hanging out over here, waiting for some slimes. Oh, and it actually turns into just a regular swamp, which is probably a much easier place to fight slimes because there are less trees and roots and things everywhere. Oh, and there's frogs here. That's really good to know. We will definitely be coming back and collecting up some frogs so that we can make ourselves a frog light farm. And lily pads. I needed lily pads as well. Oh my gosh. So many things that I forgot I needed. Ah, finally. I found a slime. This is the first one I found. Oh, oh, and there's so many zombies. Oh, it's it's so laggy in the swamp. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Running away, running away. It's so, oh, my game is so laggy here. Why is the game so laggy? Go away, skeleton. I just want the slimes. Please leave me alone. No, no, thank you. Okay, something about this mangrove swamp is really making my game lag. I really, I apologize for how laggy this is. There are so many skeletons over there. Oh, there's another slime. I think I just saw one. Yes, yes, slimes, finally. I'm so glad that I'm using my looting sword. Okay, what do we have? We have 32 slime. While we wait for it to be nighttime again, see if I can breed some of these frogs up and then I can just take their tadpoles home in a, in a bucket and then we don't have to travel all the way back over here to get frogs in the future when we need them. So if we give you some slime and you some slime, we'll use two of our precious slime. What? You see what that frog did? Okay, we're going to use one more. We'll get you to go and lay some, some tadpoles, please. There we go. Okay. Found another slime right next to an enderman and a bunch of skeletons. Okay, we got gotcha. And we got 39 slime balls. Maybe just like a few more. I just, I don't want to have to come back to the swamp, basically. So maybe we just hang around a little bit longer and avoid the skeletons. Ugh. Oh my gosh, it's so laggy in this swamp. Oh no, oh no. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Ooh. Okay, 46. I think, you know, I think 46 should be fine. It sh that should keep me going for a while. Let's sleep before we die to something else. I think that's everything that we, we came out for. And we got some tadpoles as well, which I had forgotten that we could get over here. So we can bring those home with us so we also don't have to come back out here just to get frogs when we want to build a frog light farm at some point. Now we are just gonna head all of the way. I, I think it's this way, this way. We're gonna head all the way back home. I think it's this way. I've put all of the other things away and now we can put the sand into our smelter. We need to restock our lava, which is fine because we have plenty of lava ready to go right here. And then the other thing that we need to get more of for some of the farms is probably some more iron. We don't have very much iron left. And I had noticed looking around these mountains, there is a whole bunch of iron as well as other things in the sides of the mountains that surround our valley. And I don't want to ruin the look of the mountains. So I think I'm gonna go around and mine up all of this iron. And I'm gonna take some stone with me and I'll just replace the ores with stone as I go so that we don't end up also destroying the mountain 
as we mine out all of this ore. Oh, this is a really nice view down on the valley from up here. I can't wait till we go and beat the ender dragon and get some wings because we'll be able to fly over the valley and just see how it looks from up here. But this is also a pretty good view and I think it's looking really nice. Okay, back to Ian though. So I got about a stack and a half of silk touched iron ore, which if we fortune gets us a total of four and a half stacks. That is awesome. Let's go chuck it into our smelter as well. Now we just need to clear out the space in here and put these two villagers into a proper little area so that they can make lots of villager babies for us. Now we just have to wait for night time and I've built them a little staircase to get up to where the beds are and hopefully once night time turns they'll come and get into these beds and then they'll get stuck in the little villager breeder. I'm glad I made this building tall because <laughs> it definitely needs this needed the space here. While we wait for night time I'll just decorate a little bit in here get some flooring in the same as we have got in our starter house. Oh one of the villagers just went up to bed are you gonna are you gonna go up as well you stop trying to escape the building thank you and there we go they're both up in their bed and hopefully we can see yep they're both it looks like they're both up there it looks like they're both trapped up there yep there they are welcome to your your new home this is where you're gonna live forever and also just like tidy up the area in here let's put some lighting down some nice lanterns instead of these boring torches so that is number one ticked off our list of farms that we needed to build in this episode. That was a really important one because we are definitely going to need lots more villagers. We need to tidy up all of this, all of this mess. We've been using a lot of bone meal in this area and I'd like to be able to continue doing that. So next up we need to make a bone meal farm and I'm going to make a moss one since we're also using moss and then we can kind of use it to get both of those things. I am not a redstoner, so I'm just going to follow a tutorial for this and I'm not going to try and explain what I'm doing because I don't really know what I'm doing, but I will link the tutorial below if you want to check it out. I've been thinking of a good way to decorate this farm because I think moss farms are quite big and I don't really want to just build a huge building just for the sake of covering up a moss farm. So I decided to give up and just put it underground. So <laughs> if we come over to the sniffer barn, let's just check on the seeds as well. Oh, that's doing really well. Underneath the sniffer barn, we actually have this huge space down here that was here that we covered over with terraforming. And this actually is where I have been getting, collecting up my moss so far, as you can see by what's left there. Uh, so I thought this actually is probably the perfect place. I'm gonna clear this out and I'm gonna build a moss farm. I officially hate moss farms. This was such a nightmare. I actually, this is actually the second moss farm that I have built now because I built one moss farm to start with and it just didn't work. And I kept trying to fix it and I don't understand redstone so I couldn't fix it. So I took the whole thing down and I built a second one instead and this one now is working, which is good. But this has taken me so many hours. It's actually just, it's not even funny. <laughs> I'm laughing but it's <laughs> yeah but it's working and we're getting bone meal collecting in this chest and we also have like a little siphon off to the side which is collecting some of the things so that we'll have a bit of a moss collection as well because we are using the moss and then once that gets filled up it will just stop collecting and it will all just go into the bone meal as well so that's good it is actually quite nice and quiet though as well so I think we probably won't be able to hear it from up here yeah, so it, that means I can leave it running in the background whilst we continue with the rest of the farms because we are not quite finished building farms for this episode. So the next farm I want to make is a honeycomb farm. I've been collecting these bees nests that are around in the valley and actually there's one, there's another one up there. There's so many of them around. And I think that we're gonna build them a greenhouse. I'm thinking this kind of spot up here on the hill next to the sniffer barn would be quite good so we need to take some of these trees down and I'm not totally sure how big I want to make this so I'm gonna just sort of start planning out a circle and see 
what it looks like once we get some of the, the sides in. And these barrels will just be the bottom layer. I think they're just going to add a bit of kind of detail to the bottom of some sort of pillars that will make up the actual structure. We'll use oak logs like this. And I think they look quite good together. That's definitely not going to be big enough though, is it? I think this is a much better size. Not too big, but also definitely big enough to fit our three bees nests inside. I'm going to level up this ground. Let's um, let's just fill all of this in so that we're on kind of a flat level. Normally it's quite nice to have some variation in height in some builds, but I feel like with a greenhouse, we really want to have kind of a flat foundation. For some reason, it just kind of feels a bit odd to have a greenhouse on a slope. And I've run out of glass. Okay, we definitely... We're going to need way more glass than this. Um, I guess I'm going back out to gather some more sand. <laughs> I'll be right back. And I think we're going to do dark oak for the roof trim again, just like we have done in all of the other buildings so far. I think that keeping that kind of consistency throughout all of these buildings is just going to help, oh, help tie everything together. I'm just trying to add a bit more detail to this roof trim and sort of have like a double layered roof trim I guess. I'm not really sure how it's going to look but I think it's going to help just make this a little bit less plain and I want the roof to kind of curve up and have I want to add a bit extra into the middle of the roof so I need it to curve up into the center so I kind of need to know where the center is actually going to be. Well this looks very weird right now but this is just a plan so I kind of know where to build these sides up to meet. And we're going to bring the pink roof in over here. Of course, we have to have the pink. I'm sort of going for like a dome shape and I think it's kind of working. I definitely need to take a step back and have a look. And I need some more oak logs as well. So let's just hop down. Yeah, I think that's starting to look good. I'm going to add another little bit to the roof in the middle there. I am running very, very low on oak wood though because I keep using it as logs. So... Luckily, we have a bone mill farm now, so we can just grow trees super quick and easy. Yep, I think that looks really cute. I think that's the perfect size for our little bees to live in. We definitely need to do the inside, of course. So this farm is actually just going to be a manual farm. We're not going to put anything automatic in for this one. We don't need a huge amount of honeycomb, so I'm just going to set up three little campfires and then we will put the bees nests on top of them and I think that this will work just fine for us. I feel like maybe I shouldn't have let the bees out before I had decorated in here. I'm just going to tidy up the inside of the wooden parts by covering over these, kind of just bringing that same transition in from the outside just so that this transition feels a little bit smoother. Oh, oh no, oh no I hit a bee! No, 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 no! No, oh no, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to punch you. I was just trying, I was trying to decorate your home. Okay, I think it was just the one bee that stung me because it seems like these two bees are okay. They seem like they're okay. Let's give them some flowers. And lastly, we just want to add a bunch of flowers into and also some of the lilacs because I think they fit really well as well. And then we're gonna just spam the floor with pink petals to finish off. And there we go, our little honeycomb farm slash bees greenhouse is all complete. It's looking very flowery, very, very pretty. And I think the bees are going to love it in here. And then we can just come and harvest this honeycomb whenever we need. And we can also then grab honey if we need it. I think this is just going to be much easier than setting up an automatic one. And I don't need piles and piles of honey. I basically just want to be able to make some candles to decorate with. I actually think that it could do with some green on the outside. So maybe let's add some leaves to the outside as well. A nice overgrown looking greenhouse. I really like that. I think that's looking really cute. And another farm that we can tick off of our list. And the last farm that I want to build should hopefully be a really nice easy farm. I just want to make a little pumpkin and melon automatic Farm. Now that we have these villagers, the villager breeder, we're going to get some more villagers very soon and we definitely need something to be able to trade nice and easily 
with these villagers and I think pumpkin and melon just always works quite well. Oh, there's a cave under here. Oh, well, this kind of saves me clearing out a bunch of space for the farm, I suppose. I'm going for a reasonable size pumpkin melon farm because we will end up needing a bunch of these things to trade with. So we might as well just build it up bigger now. Now I'm just going to plant all of these and get squished by the pistons every time I do anything. Okay, and I think that we are finished. Now we just have to put the hopper on here, the hopper minecart, let that go around and it should start collecting up. I've bone milled everything, so they should be growing. And also it was harvesting me and the, the pumpkins and melons whilst I was bone milling, so I do have a few. But I'm gonna run this for a bit and see, just check that it is working. Yep, it definitely seems to be working. We are getting pumpkins and melons coming in here. I think this farm is all good to go and we can just leave these to collect up underneath while we do whatever else we want to do. But that was the final farm that I wanted to build in this episode and now we have got a couple of new buildings. We have a bunch of new farms, really, really useful drops, all collecting up automatically for us to be able to use in all of the builds that we're going to make in this valley. And I'm so glad that I took the time to build all of these farms, even though some of them were fairly annoying to build. Moss farm, I'm looking at you. But that is going to be all for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing me struggle building farms, but hopefully now that we have got them, that will make our lives so much easier for the rest of this series. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.